In the past few years, reports from across the globe have found an alarming increase in cybersecurity threats, especially as companies and societies move to a more digitalized world. Verizon Business reiterates this in its latest Data Breach Investigations report. Now, let's find out more on these findings from Philip Larby, lead of the Verizon Threat Advisory Team for EMEA. Hi, Phil. It's a pleasure speaking with you again. First off, your latest report raises alarm on the level of cybersecurity incidents found and also breaches confirmed in 2023. Have these increased compared to previous years? And what do you suspect are the main reasons for this trend? Yes, I mean, that. Yeah, it, it's a great question. The, the data breach report that we issue, of course, is, is based upon the data that, that we collect from uh, is covering 94 countries and about 80 contributors. So from year to year, the, de- the size of the data set that we have will be different. And, and the great news about the 2024 report is that it's actually double the amount of data that we've, we've actually seen in, in the 2023 report. So whilst it may not be an indicator of the level of cyber incidents that are occurring globally, um, certainly we know from the day-to-day activity of what our teams are are handling in terms of customer incidents, the forensics that we're doing, yes, there's no question um, that there is a continual increase in the volume, overall volume that we we tend to handle. Um, But the actual report itself, uh, I think the one thing I can say is it's more qualitative this year because we have a substantially greater size of data. that gives us really good insights in terms of, as you say, the geography, where the where the incidents are occurring, but also from a what we call a vertical sector perspective, which is the which which commercial sectors are we seeing being targeted, where are the incidents being successful, um, and and we certainly can see some changes. Probably one of the key things for this year. Um, is actually some additional contributors that we have to the report in 2024, which includes some very key, what we call local competent authorities. And they're they're the authorities to whom mandatory reporting of cyber incidents must occur. So it's for this year, it's given us a very, very interesting insight into the volume of incidents that are being reported because of things like GDPR. Um, and that's given us a slightly different picture to where it was last year. And how do cyber attacks vary by type and the motivations behind them? And is this region specific? Um, yes, very much so. That, so certainly what the, the, the 2024 report is telling us that from what we saw last year was, of course, the very serious nature of ransomware attacks. That is still incredibly prevalent. Um, we saw it uh, somewhat leveling out of the the volume of of ransomware attacks last year across all different sectors and all different geographies. But one of the the very interesting uh, dynamics that the 2024 report shows us is we knew that there was an element of ransomware uh, or ransom attacks where there was a what we call a double-edged sword. There was a secondary extortion dynamic that was beginning to, to, to appear. And that was stealing data from organizations by threat groups and and then having a second extortion to stop them, pay that extortion to stop them making that confidential data public. When we actually take that extortion dynamic, which is growing, in addition to the ransomware levels, which have remained relatively the same as last year, but the extortion dynamic has has certainly uh, seen us take a leap in terms of how from a proportionate basis, ransomware and extortion is now pretty much a, a third of everything that we're seeing. The, the, the other dynamic is, as I mentioned earlier about the, 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 the mandatory reporting to some of the contributors of the report. And sometimes there is a, a, a significant focus on the external threat that is coming into organizations, but this mandatory reporting is actually very clearly unveiling how much of an internal risk actually exists. And when we talk about uh, miscellaneous error, and that that encompasses a number of things, misdelivery, sending things inadvertently to the the wrong party, Um, misconfiguration, which is just 
the human error of, of configuring some of the security environment incorrectly, but also the susceptibility of individuals to things like social engineering attacks. Now, w- when we take all of those into account, um, this internal error dynamic is actually now getting almost as much as the volumes that we see within ransomware and extortion. So ransomware and extortion is about a third. This internal error has jumped from around about one in 10 of the breaches that we see to almost one in three. So about actually about 28%. So the report is very much a reminder this year of of really what that internal error dynamic is as well. Um, The third most serious dynamic that we're dealing with is is really what we call business email compromise. that is a way that, that threat groups are able to compromise organizations' email capabilities or, or servers and manipulate those, those email accounts so that they can induce payments going out of the organization to, to, to their own accounts. Um, and we, again, we've seen a very significant increase in that. So they're, they're predominantly the, sort of the key type of, 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 of attack types that we're seeing. And from a geography perspective, we're actually seeing them very much everywhere. That's very interesting. And you mentioned the human error. Diving into the landscape in the EMEA region, your report suggests that the human element in breaches continues to be significant. In your view, what are the reasons for this and what improvements can be made there? Well, the, uh, uh, again, it's, it's an extremely good question because the, the human person um, uh, is is quite a delicate dynamic in that from one day we can do something which can be very logical and very sensible and the next day for whatever reason um, we can do something that you know that is completely different and, and would appear crazy um, the threat actors know that that we're, the, the human person is susceptible um, in, in different circumstances and the covid pandemic when everybody was working at home showed us that they had almost a completely different security psyche so the, the, the second dynamic here is that the security infrastructure that most organizations operate, um, uh, dealing with the human person and its ability to, to, to do so many different things on different days, um, that's far more difficult for, for technology to be actually be able to deal with. And the threat actors know that, so they play very heavily upon um the, the weaknesses within the human person, the susceptibility to, for example, in phishing, making something look very real, um, that it's genuine, and inducing them into, into, into clicking on something. So as much as the threat community can use the, 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 the frailties of the human person means they've got better chances of succeeding in their attacks. So they're very clear about where they can use the human person in different individual phases of uh, of the attacks that they're that they're currently undertaking, and and certainly the, the trend that we can see over a number of years tells us that the prevailing upon that human element is is actually causing their attacks to be incredibly successful. So on that uh, on that matter, do you see a rising need in the use of AI to assist with protection from cyber attacks? Oh, well, I don't think there's any question there. Absolutely, yes. And, and we're already beginning to see the introduction of AI in addition to machine learning, particularly at the very first phases of, of when security infrastructure is, is alerted that there may be something going on within their environment. So whether they're using endpoint detection and response that creates alerts, for just as an example, that usually goes to a security operations command, a, a SOC, as it's called. And historically, that's been a very manualized process of, of dealing with those, those alerts to actually identify whether they're true malicious or, or whether they're false positives. The introduction of AI now um, that is available at that, what we call level one type of instant response, means uh, uh, because of the learning from all of the things that have gone on in the past, uh, it means the automated process with AI means the the ability for the infrastructure to respond and triage is so much more quickly. And we talk about something called mean time to respond. That's how, how quickly, of course, can you respond to these errors. And we're seeing these new applications and, and capabilities that bring in AI 
at that level one uh, area is is significantly improving that mean time to respond. So AI is increasingly used by companies, but is it also increasingly uh, utilized by criminals as well in the digital space? And are you concerned its role will become more integral to future complex cyber threats? Um, a- absolutely, there's no question. And we, we do cover uh, AI within the 2024 DBIR this year uh, in the context of how is it being used by, by, by threat actors uh, and, and the likes of criminals. We're certainly seeing, with so much uh, emphasis that's now on the likes of generative AI, chat GPT, for example, we're certainly seeing how threat actors are using that type of AI uh, in the social engineering type of attacks. So when they're preparing phishing emails or pretexting, then they're using uh, that generative AI to make uh, the, the social engineering attacks far, far, far more realistic. What we're not seeing is the use of, uh, of of AI in the actual continued ongoing process of an attack once it's actually within the organization. So is it likely to come in the future? I, I suspect, yes, we will begin to see that, but there's no evidence in the, the data that we've had, certainly this year or, or, or last year, that shows us there's any significant use of it in the, in the yeah. scope of attacks. Well, that's good to know. Phil, it was a pleasure finding out more about the latest insights from Verizon Business on cybersecurity attacks. Thanks for joining us. You're very welcome. Thank you very much for being here.